Do you love the idea of diving, but are held back by fear? By the end of this video, you won't be, because I'm going to show you the five most common fears that hold 99% of people back and how to overcome them. To start things off, let's look at the first reason you fear the ocean and how to overcome it. From the beginning of time, the ocean has been a centerpiece of mystery and horror in stories. It's a realm where even today many mysteries continue and very few of us land-loving humans get to experience. Our minds accustomed to solid ground and breathable air struggle to process this new reality underwater. But this fear isn't a sign that you're not cut out for diving. It's a natural response to stepping into the unknown. It's your brain's way of saying, hey, this is new territory. Let's be careful here. And that's not a bad thing. A healthy respect for the ocean is the first step towards becoming a responsible diver. So how do we transform this fear into fascination? Just as a toddler learns to walk by taking small steps, new divers can conquer their fears by taking baby steps into the underwater world. Starting with shallow, calm, and clear water dives is like dipping your toes into the shallow end of a pool before diving into the deep end. It allows you to acclimate to the underwater environment at your own pace. Each dive builds your confidence like adding another brick to the foundation of your diving experience. You just have to keep getting back in and practicing. As you gain more experience, something magical happens. The fear of the unknown begins to transform into a sense of wonder and curiosity. The creatures you once feared from the darkness become much less intimidating, and your confidence in facing these creatures significantly improves. Remember, diving is a highly controlled and regulated activity. The safety protocols and training you receive aren't just bureaucratic red tape. They're the tools that allow you to safely explore this alien world. With each dive, you're not just conquering your fears, you're expanding your understanding of our planet and your place in it. You're pushing your boundaries, challenging your preconceptions, and discovering strengths you never knew you had. It's like unlocking hidden levels in the game of life, each one revealing new wonders and challenges. However, you'll never level up if you don't keep trying. Best of all, this mindset will spread to other facets in your life. As you dive deeper into yourself, let's now take a look at the second reason you fear the water and how to overcome it. Every breath you take underwater is a testament to human ingenuity and a reminder of our vulnerability. What if the technology you depend on betrays you at the worst possible moment? Let me show you how equipment anxiety can grip even the most seasoned divers. Imagine this, you are 60 feet underwater, surrounded by a vibrant coral reef. Suddenly, your regulator that's in your mouth starts free-flowing, spewing out precious air bubbles at an alarming rate. Your heart races, your mind floods with panic, and for a moment, you forget all your training. I've been there. I've had a complete and total failure of the system to which I used to breathe. I was left helpless to watch my air gauge quickly diminish to empty. This fear of equipment failure is like having a nagging backseat driver in your mind. It's always there whispering, what if scenarios? What if your BCD doesn't inflate? What if your mass floods and you can't clear it? These thoughts can turn an exciting adventure into a stress-filled ordeal. The root of this anxiety often stems from unfamiliarity with your gear. When you're new to diving, each piece of the equipment can feel like a complex puzzle. You're not just learning to swim underwater, you're learning to be a mobile life support system. It's like being asked to fly a plane after reading only the manual. But here's the good news. This fear is entirely magical. The key lies through preparation and practice. Every diver goes through required certification that will help teach you the basics. Further, scuba diving is a team sport and often you will dive with knowledgeable and experienced divers that you can ask questions to and learn from. Further, pre-dive checks aren't just a formality. They're your first line of defense against equipment issues. It's like doing system checks before launching a rocket 
You want to make sure everything's working before you leave your comfort zone. The buddy system and team-based diving model is another crucial safety net. Your dive buddy isn't just there for companionship, they're your underwater lifeline and a system of redundancy. By familiarizing yourself with each other's gear, you create a backup system. If something goes wrong with your equipment, your buddy can help. It's like having a co-pilot with a two-seater plane. You've got someone to rely on if things get dicey. Practicing with your equipment in controlled environments works wonders for your confidence. Start in a pool or shallow water. Get comfortable assembling and disassembling your gear. Practice emergency procedures until they become second nature. Ask yourself, what should you do if any piece of your gear fails and practice those scenarios? Once you start practicing, that anxiety you felt during dives will slowly be alleviated by confidence. Remember, scuba gear is designed with multiple redundancies and safety features. Modern equipment is incredibly reliable if properly maintained. As you gain experience, something remarkable happens. The equipment that once seemed alien becomes an extension of yourself. You start to feel subtle changes in your buoyancy, the slight variations in airflow. Your gear becomes a trusted partner in your underwater adventures. Moving forward to our next fear, I want you to ask yourself how long can you really hold your breath when you're 100 feet below the surface? While conquering equipment fears is crucial, there's one anxiety that haunts even veteran divers. It's not just about what might malfunction, but what will inevitably run out and could suddenly stop dispensing. Imagine exploring a vibrant coral reef surrounded by schools of colorful fish. Suddenly, you glance at your air gauge and realize it's lower than you expected. Your heart rate quickens and your breathing becomes shallow. Each inhale feels like it could be your last. I know these scenarios all too well. Through all my diving, I've experienced at least seven occasions where a diver has ran out of air. Luckily, either myself or another member of the party was able to donate and none of the situations was scarring for anyone involved. This fear often stems from inexperience with air consumption rates. When you're new to diving, it's hard to gauge how long your tank will last. It's like trying to estimate how far you can drive on a tank of gas in a car you've never driven before. Of course, ones that don't actually tell you. Worse, as a new diver, you're operating at literally peak unperformance. It takes a long time and a lot of investment in control to improve your air consumption. But here's the thing, running out of air underwater is entirely preventable. The key lies to proper air management techniques and regular monitoring. It's not about holding your breath longer. It's about making every breath count. Make a habit of checking your air gauge every five minutes. Further, let me introduce another important concept that experienced divers practice. Their air in their tank is not just for them. They will always compensate and ensure they can have enough to return to surface with knowing that you could be sharing the air with someone else. And that's an important safety net. Even if you mess up and run out of air or have an utter gear failure, you have a team to support you and everything will be fine. That's the way it should be if every diver treats their air in their tank as it is a potential life support for two. Regular communication with your team is also essential. By checking in about their air levels, you ensure that everyone is aware of each other's air situation. This is especially useful with diving with people you're not very familiar with, or just to combat complacency 
which happens even to the best of divers. As you gain more experience, something remarkable happens. The fear of running out of air transforms into a calm, controlled awareness. You become attuned to your breathing, your air consumption, and your surroundings. It's like developing a sixth sense underwater. Remember, each time you face this fear and manage your air successfully, your confidence grows. Mastering air management isn't just about safety, it's about freedom. When you're not constantly worrying about your air supply, you can fully immerse yourself in that underwater world. You can take the time to observe that curious octopus or marvel at the intricate patterns of the coral formations. For our next fear, imagine admiring an intricate coral formation. When a shadow passes overhead, your heart races as you realize it's not just any fish, it's a shark, a big one. In the blink of an eye, your underwater paradise becomes a test of nerves. What do you do when Jaws decides to crash your dive party? Let me show you how encountering marine life can trigger both awe and fear in even the most seasoned divers. This fear of marine life encounters often stems from sensationalized media portrayals, movies like Jaws, and dramatic news reports that painted sharks and other large marine creatures as mindless killing machines. It's as if we've conditioned to see the ocean as a war zone rather than a delicate ecosystem. But here's the reality. The total number of shark incidents involving scuba divers is remarkably low. In 2020, there were only 57 shark incidents worldwide, and a mere 4% of them involved divers. To put that in perspective, you're more likely to be injured by a vending machine falling on you than a shark while diving. That's not to say they can't be dangerous, but we have to put things into perspective. Understanding marine behavior is key to transforming this fear into respect. Most marine animals, including sharks, are naturally curious, but not inherently aggressive towards humans. They're not actively seeking us out as prey. It's more like we're an unusual sight in their underwater neighborhood, and they're just gonna check you out to see what's going on with all those bubbles. Before diving in new areas, it's crucial to learn about the local marine life. This knowledge acts as a mental shield against unfounded fears. For instance, knowing that whale sharks are gentle filter feeders can turn a potential terrifying encounter into an awe-inspiring experience. Practicing calm and respective approaches during underwater encounters is vital. Sudden movements or loud noises can startle marine life, potentially leading to dangerous situations. As you gain experience and knowledge about marine life, something remarkable happens. The fear that once made your heart race transforms into fascination and respect. That fear that initially sent shivers down your spine becomes a magnificent creature to observe and appreciate from a safe distance. Remember, we're visitors in their world. Respecting marine life and maintaining appropriate distances isn't just about safety. It's about preserving the delicate balance of the ocean ecosystem. Understanding that scuba divers are not typically on a shark's list of desirable prey can alleviate most of your fears. You look more intimidating and scary to sharks given you're blowing these strange bubbles all over. It's going to be pretty freaky looking to them and they will spend most of the time with you just trying to figure all that out. They're not looking at you like your food. Ultimately, conquering the fear of marine life encounters opens up a whole new dimension of diving. Instead of spending your dives anxiously scanning for potential threats, you can fully immerse yourself in the underwater spectacle. Further, as observers of the underwater world, you can help be an advocate about the animals and environments you see down there, as most of the surface dwellers tend to forget about it. The ocean is not an endless breadbasket. Each encounter becomes an opportunity for learning and connection with the ocean's inhabitants. Now that you've conquered your fear of sharks, for this next fear, 
let's dive into something even more primal. Imagine being in the open ocean looking down and as far as the eye can see is darkness. Is the darkness of the abyss. The imagination goes wild. What could be lurking down there? At what point does exploration become a dangerous dance with the limits of human endurance? Let me show you how the fear of death can grip even experienced divers. Imagine you are descending along a vibrant coral wall, the surface growing distant above you. As you drop deeper, the colors start to fade, replaced by endless blue void. The increasing pressure reminds you they have to equalize. Suddenly, a wave of unease washes over you. You begin to hear birds chirping. How much further can you go before it's too much? I've been there. During a dive in the Great Blue Hole, I pushed my limits to explore down to a giant stalactite that pushes the boundaries of recreational limits. As I descended down to 40 meters, the nitrogen narcosis began to set in. It was like being slightly intoxicated while knowing you're in a potentially dangerous situation. Combined with some very curious sharks that decided they wanted to check me out while I was feeling as high as balls. Nitrogen psychosis is something like being drunk, except at depth and it often occurs by descending quickly and deep. No one is immune to nitrogen psychosis and it is something that all divers must get used to. It generally will fade very quickly within a matter of minutes and you will want a dive buddy to keep an eye on you if you are narked. And of course this is another reason for the buddy system so that if and when you are narked and you start doing something crazy you have someone to bring you back to reality. And it's all about those safeties and redundancies. This general fear of death is known as bathobia often stems from a lack of experience and understanding of pressure changes. It's like being an inexperienced hiker and suddenly faced with scaling a sheer cliff face without a trail. Your body and mind are entering unfamiliar territory and every instinct is screaming at you to turn back. But here's the thing, conquering this fear opens up a whole new dimension of diving. It's not just about pushing yourself beyond safe limits, it's about gradually expanding that comfort zone. And I do have to quickly remind that you should never exceed the limits of which you've been trained for. But the tips here will help you get over fully utilizing the depth in which you are trained. Think of it like building muscle. You don't start by lifting the heaviest weights. You begin with what you can handle and slowly increase the challenge. Each scuba certification level is designed to acclimate divers to deeper waters gradually. Your first dive might max out at 12 meters or 40 feet, but as you gain experience, you'll find yourself pursuing more education to mitigate some of the risks deeper depths bring. It's a journey of small steps that lead to incredible discoveries. The deeper you go, the more risk the dive brings and the more knowledge, skill, and practice you need to do it safely. Mastering buoyancy is crucial for overcoming the fear of death. But with practice, you'll find yourself feeling you have full control of the depth you want to be. You'll be able to go to that depth and pin yourself there. First, start off by practicing in controlled, shallow environments without current like pools, lakes, or shallow bays. As your skills improve, so will your confidence. Mindfulness techniques can also be powerful tools for maintaining calm during deep dives. Deep breathing exercises, for example, can help slow your heart rate and clear your mind. It's similar to how skydivers use controlled breathing to stay focused during a jump. By staying present and aware, you can better manage any anxiety that arises. As you gain experience, something remarkable happens. The depths that once seemed daunting become inviting. You start to appreciate the unique beauty of the deep, the eerie silence broken only by the sound of your bubbles. It's like discovering a hidden world that very few people get to experience. Remember, respect for the depth is healthy. It keeps you safe and mindful of your limits, but don't let it hold you back from exploring the incredible wonders that lie beneath the surface. With proper training, equipment, and gradual approach, you can safely push those boundaries and discover 
the awe-inspiring realm of the deep. As we wrap up our dive into the depths of scuba fears, remember this, feeling anxious underwater is normal as getting sand in your wetsuit. Even seasoned divers like me still get jitters sometimes. It's not about erasing your fears, but learning to accept and eventually conquer them. Every diver out there will have some skill ceiling that will scare even them if they start pushing past it. It's comforting to know that no one is immune to fear. However, we divers must train to make sure when things go wrong, we don't panic. We do the things we've been taught and have been practicing to mitigate those issues when they go wrong. Now that we've mapped out the path to conquering your diving fears, let's explore more challenges you might face getting into scuba. Trust me, you'll be more than prepared to take the plunge. Check that out in this video here and until next time.